Walk with History today is from the location of the first battle of two ironclads. Join me today from Fort Norfolk, Virginia. So how cool is this? I'm walking in to the fort and this is one of the forts that was sponsored by George Washington to fortify the coast of America. So this fort has been around since the 1700s. George Washington wanted forts along the coast for protection of America and this is one of them. So this is one of the last remaining ones as well. And so we're here today at Fort Norfolk. There's a couple buildings here to look at, so we're gonna walk around and look at them. There's a storehouse, a guard house, uh, enlisted quarters, and a magazine holding area, and an officer's quarters. So that's what is here at Fort Norfolk, and you're allowed to come in and look around, so let's check it out. One of the neat things here as well is these cannons were basically dredged from the harbor, and they were able to look at them in the way that they're made, and decipher that they're probably from the 1700s, from the British, when uh, Norfolk was shelled by the British, that these cannons probably came off a British ship because these were made in Wales, England, and that area was known to build the cannons for British ships, and that's where these cannons most like, likely came from. They're pitted because of the salt water, but those are the cannons they have here. This over here is like a carpenter shop right across with enlisted quarters, the magazine. This was a really big magazine storage. And then officer's quarters. Right back here above is a guardhouse. So that's what that is right there. George Washington had wanted to fortify the coast of America and called for Fort Norfolk to be built. He called for a couple forts. This is one of them. At first it was earth work fort. The ground dug up on the sides here. This is an earth work fort. That is what it looked like in the beginning. And then in the 1800s, when it's starting to see, be more recognized that this could really give some protection to Fort Norfolk, they build it up and put these buildings in here. And at first, this was a parade ground. And this armory is put in in the 1800s because of building ships and the armory was right beside where they were shipbuilding and they were worried that if that exploded, it would just ruin, destroy all the ships. So they put in an armory here, a little bit away from the, where the shipbuilding was happening so to, to protect the ships in case this ever blew this up. This is located on French Street in Norfolk, 803 French Street. This fort has been around since it's seen the American Revolution, it's seen the War of 1812 and the Civil War. So it's been used for many different encounters. In the Revolutionary War, you get the burning of Norfolk where the British Royal Navy comes here and shells the town. The Loyalists are also fleeing and the revolutionaries are trying to hold down the town. This is the fort is still here. It doesn't stop much of what's happening that day, but it's, it's here. This fort, this area is most famous for the Battle of the Ironclads. So what happens? How is this connected to the Battle of the Ironclads? In the Civil War, Virginia will secede in April of 1861. The Union abandons both the city and the fort of Norfolk. And this is held by the Confederate Army and it's held for about 13 months in 1861. The first Battle of the Ironclads takes place on March 8th. 1862 and the water right across from Fort Norfolk. So I will go out there and I'll show you and point to it for you. It's called the Battle of Hampton Roads and you're going to get the Confederacy has their ironclad, the CSS Virginia, which is built with parts from the USS Merrimack. So you might hear people talk about the, the Merrimack conjunction with the Virginia. On March 8th, 1862, the Virginia encounters the Congress and the Cumberland, the USS ships from the Union, and they're wooden and annihilate them, sink them, and come in contact with the Minnesota. And the Minnesota runs aground right over here. By that time, Virginia has used all of its ammunition, it needs more men. So they let the Minnesota stay aground and come back here to get more ammunition during the night of March 8th, 
to March 9th, that's when the monitor comes down the river from the Union and blocks stands guard for the Minnesota. So the next morning when the CSS Virginia goes out to finish its job on the on the Minnesota, the monitor is standing guard and they fight. They fight for about four hours and both of them are hitting each other with shells and and trying to sink the other one. And really, it's a stalemate because they're both ironclad in that moment. Naval shipbuilding changes across the world because now nations realize that iron ships are where the fighting power is at. Iron ships are going to be the most protected ships. They're going to be the most versatile ships. And they also will start to look at 360 firing guns so that you don't need your cannons to pull right up beside and fire in one direction. You're looking at guns that can fire 360. Both of these things will come out of this first battle of the ironclads here in Norfolk, Virginia. <laughs> if you're a movie buff like me, then if you remember Sahara. You found a coin. I found the coin. The end of the Civil War, a battleship carrying a secret shipment of gold vanished without a trace. Where in the hell did you get this? He is looking for the CSS Texas. Now that's an ironclad that was built in Richmond, Virginia. And in reality, it never really saw battle, but it's considered the best ironclad ever built. Uh, the fall of Richmond happens and uh, it's captured in April of 1865, and then it's brought down here to Norfolk in 1867 and basically sold for scrap. But in the movie, the CSS Texas actually makes it out of the fall of Richmond and supposedly makes it across the Atlantic. Now, <laughs> what's interesting about that movie in the Sahara, they actually use the CSS Virginia as a model to make the CSS Texas. So what you're actually looking at when you watch that movie is actually a, a good replica of the CSS Virginia. So what happens to Fort Norfolk after the Civil War? It's used at some point, you know, to hold more gunpowder and storage. So the Army Corps of Engineers is running a lot of their logistics from here. A lot of their people who are the point of contacts to be deciphering codes or knowing the information that's going on real time are housed in the areas here. So it's been used for that. Since then, after they had used that for all that time, they actually had built, they built a real building for it. And that building blocks the view of the harbor. So you could really see the fort, how close it would be to the water. And from that area, it's actually where ships would be get loaded on with ammunition. Fort Norfolk is the only fort that still survives from the original forts that George Washington ordered to have built to basically shield the Atlantic. And because it's still here, it's still here for you to come and see and to view. And it's been used in the War of 1812 and it was used in the Civil War. And to see the battle, the area of the battle where the first ironclads took place, it's actually pretty amazing. So if you have time, come out to Fort Norfolk. It's waiting here for you. It's very interesting to be here, to walk in the presence of history, to know that this fort was so important to many different conflicts in American history is very cool as well. So I hope you enjoyed this. I hope you learned something about ironclads and on to my next Walk With History. Yeah.